use that upper stage to throw a 40 ton payload on a minimum energy trajectory to Mars. What is that payload? Next chart. Consists of a number of things. The primary object is the Earth return vehicle, ERV. It is a little rocket ship for coming back from Mars. It's got a small cabin that can house four astronauts on a six month transit from Mars to Earth. No one's in it now. Then below that are two methane oxygen uh, uh, chemical propulsion stages, which however are unfueled. And then slung below the vehicle, not shown in this diagram, is a light truck, which in the back of it has a nuclear reactor, 100 kilowatt power. Okay. This thing flies to Mars, use the aerobrake to capture into Mars orbit. You see the weather's okay, we bring it in, use the aeroshell to plow us down to subsonic speeds, pop a chute, come down soft with rockets just like we do Viking. The, 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 okay, so now you got this thing on the ground, then you, you telerobotically drive the truck a couple of hundred yards away, deploy the reactor on the ground, turn it on. Next chart. I, do, I hate to hurry you here, but we're just to time. Okay. This is very interesting, but we need to move on. All right. Using very chemistry, you make the propellant, okay? And this has all been demonstrated in full on Earth, actually, since the gaslight era. Next chart. Skip it. Next chart. Okay. Um, then at the next launch opportunity, you launch two more boosters off the Cape. One shoots out another Earth return vehicle. The other shoots out a HAB uh, module with uh, four astronauts in it. Next chart. Well, that shows the HAB module. Next chart. Okay, it's a basic tuna can hab with a number of, uh, of rooms and a solar flare storm shelter in the, in the middle, which you can shield with provisions. You don't need extra mass to provide. Next chart. Okay, we'll skip this next chart. Okay, we can make artificial gravity on the way to Mars, and this is very important so the crew's health doesn't deteriorate, and it also means that we don't need to do another 30 years of research on the space station on zero gravity health effects on the crew uh, because we can avoid them through simple engineering. Next chart. Uh, next chart. Keep going. This is a concept of the base. You, you, you land in the immediate vicinity of the Earth return vehicle. If you land some distance away, you have a ground rover that can get you to the Earth return vehicle. You also have a backup Earth return vehicle that you can direct to the site if you do not land accurately enough to drive there. Surface for a year and a half, which allows you to do substantial exploration over a period of time. At the end of that time, you get in the Earth return vehicle, you take off, you fly back to Earth. You leave your hab on the base, so each, uh, on the surface, so each time you add another hab to the Martian surface, there is nothing in this that is fundamentally beyond our technology. Let's move forward quickly through a couple of charts. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, there. Okay, um, now the moon, if you also develop lunar landing stages, you could use the same set of hardware to land on the moon, and that could be done as a tangential goal of the program. I would not recommend the moon as a precursor mission for a Mars because you do have to develop lunar landing and ascent modules, which are, uh, no, uh, are not utilizable by the Mars mission. However, you could do a near-Earth asteroid mission as a precursor because a near-Earth asteroid mission can be done with a subset of the Mars hardware. In other words, I'm not proposing a near-Earth asteroid program. I'm proposing that you set your goal on Mars, and in the course of doing that, uh, there are certain other activities where you exercise a subset of the Mars hardware, which gives you greater confidence and have a certain uh, value in themselves. And a near-Earth asteroid mission could fall into this class. So there it is. The technology is there, okay, to do this. Um, you know, going to Mars on an absolute scale is more difficult than going to the moon. But relative to our technology today, this is a lower order of challenge. In 1961, we didn't even know if people could eat in space, okay? You know, and we got to the moon eight years later. The, the amount of technology we have to develop to accomplish this plan is modest compared to what had to be developed to, to do Apollo. And for us to say today, this is beyond us, that is this beyond our capacity, our skill, or our courage, is saying that we have become less than the people that got us here and that therefore we are going to give less to the people who follow in our footsteps. And I would say that that is something that this country cannot afford. So we're here. I think this is potentially a great moment. It's a great moment because it's a moment in which great things are possible. You've got a new administration which is re-examining everything, an administration which is committed to audacity and hope and the fierce urgency of now Okay, well, and which has uh, sufficient political support in Congress to actually implement a bold program should they decide to embrace it. The American people want and deserve a space program that is really going somewhere. By taking decisive action, by making a decisive recommendation, 
to break us out of this stagnation that we've had in the space program for several decades, for four decades. Four decades of stagnation is enough. Mr. Augustine, members of the commission, I'm asking you to make a bold recommendation to Mr. Obama that he sees the time to move America forward in space. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, your enthusiasm is certainly not lacking. And uh, we, we appreciate that and admire it. Uh, I'm afraid our time is uh, used up, so we won't be able to ask any questions, but we'll read your book. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, we now are going to turn to uh, the issue of